Recording in progress. I hear a lot of talk lately, and that's good. <laughs> but y'all been? Because I've been fighting against child trafficking and deeply rooted corruption for over a decade, and I pay dearly. I pray now the time is right. Because I'm here to expose all, and I will explain it all. Look, this may not be pretty, cleanly stated, presented with a bow. I might not be the most articulate or coherent, for that matter. So forgive the poor form if I have slapped the presentation. I'm a little rough around the edges. But this is the most direct information and evidence I believe the public will hear and see. So let's get to the bottom of this bullshit right now. Because we have these YouTubers, rumblers, podcasters, journalists, social media personalities, these bureaucrats, the SSCI, the AARO, these UAP hearings. <laughs> Look, most of these people don't have any idea of what's really going on. And the ones that do, at least partially, they're either in the fold or not prepared to actually address it realistically. And they've accepted their limits. And I've talked to many of them, including the bureaucrats. And they're not ready to do what they have to do. They're not knocking on doors. They're definitely not knocking down doors. It's, they're definitely not saving people. They're not protecting people. They can't provide for protection for people giving testimony, even if they don't track it. They are not taking any steps to ensure that no one else is. And they would need the protection. They have already accepted their limits, and I will expose this. They simply cannot pay the price to really play this dirty game. And anyone with family or loved ones, I wouldn't ask them to. But many of them are being used, even if they think they mean well. And many of these organizations that are soaking up public support are corrupt. And I will expose it all. This is a public service announcement. I am speaking out to set the record straight on the real reason child trafficking is so rampant, on why institutional and elite pedophilia investigations are halted and covered up, and to explain how this dirty secret ties in with everything that is wrong with the world today, from drug, weapon, and human trafficking, blackmail, extortion, contract killings, political and governmental corruption, to various conspiracies and false flag operations carried out over the years, and now the UAP debacle that is ensuing publicly. We're in the middle of a true epidemic, an all-out assault on our children. There are forces preying on our children, and not only their bodies, their minds, their heart, and their spirit. Think of the damage done in the last few generations alone, at the hands of the Catholic Church, the Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, so many religious institutions for so long. The schools, teachers, universities, coaches, state-sponsored child services and protective organizations, even the Boy Scouts and Eagle Scouts, who are also tied in with the state. And this year, 2023, a $2.5 billion settlement for over 80,000 Survivors of Boy Scout abuse, sexual abuse by Boy Scout troop leaders or whatever the fuck they're called. 80,000. Yes, and Boy Scouts and Eagle Scouts are tied in with the state. Who lets this happen? Who lets Child Protective Services funnel kids to abusive homes? At what point is it just negligence? How long has this been going on? All the reports over the years to institutions and law enforcement, we're talking hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands of cooperating, at least. With what result? Can it just be inept investigators? Is it negligence? A broken system? We need to start asking the right questions. Why can't we seem to provide necessary oversight and set reasonable protocols to ensure institutions for the children, to secure institutions for the children, to provide safe institutions for education and development of our children. Put me in charge. This is more than people being negligent. Why can't we seem to implement competent investigations and just enforcement against the predators? Negligence? Inept investigations? Listen, we all know what this is, and the answer is unfortunate. 
There's an intelligent design and a determined driving force behind it all, conspiring to keep the sick cycle continuing. Segment three this evening is titled, The Children and the CIA. We've learned a lot of unknown activities of the CIA in years past, some of them disturbing, to say the least. Tonight, we'll learn of the agency's interest in children. Similar to the crack epidemic that spurred in the USA in the 80s, which was ultimately attributed to the CIA and Iran Contra scandal, which was created as a means to an end to fund wartime operations and black budget programs then. We now face a child trafficking epidemic, which was created just the same as a means to an end, a feeding and breeding ground of abused and subsequently dissociative children who are ripe to be groomed and brainwashed in organized programs they are funneled into from various sources, many states sponsored. Suitable child candidates who are processed through these behavioral modification programs do often end up directly into lives of servitude. They're just channeled directly into these lives, either as a sex slave or serving and blindly following orders as a soldier spy, something darker. <laughs> But the majority of children ran through these programs will simply continue, continue to live life day to day in an innocuous fashion, many of their lives seemingly mundane as they age. And that is exactly the intended appearance. See, once a child is deemed suitable, whether they're abused and unclaimed, if they're gifted and they're scouted, or if they're offspring of personnel and sensitive and special access programs, the child subject will be funneled, routed, directed, through these programs and brainwashed, yes, meaning not only deeply embedded with general ideology, but embedded with direct commands in a programmed alter ego, an ego state, brain state, a split, multiple personality, now known in the field of psychology as dissociative identity, if you want to be technical. And a lot of the problem with understanding a lot of this is semantics. But we'll get to this. With a suitable child that possesses certain qualities, state-of-the-art technology can be applied with cutting-edge techniques during carefully crafted scenarios that children are put through, effectively forcing their brain to accept whatever is put into it as of vital importance and of utmost significance to their being. Brainwashing. And there's been a lot of research put into this. We will get into this. Exactly what do these children go through? Let me be clear. We are talking about a behavioral modification program that brainwashes children into developing a supremely loyal but subsurface, subconscious sleeper persona. Yeah, sleeper agents. Following orders that are carried out by discreetly intertwining and layering their activities into their everyday and often mundane lifestyles. Some passively maintaining daily observations and networking indiscriminately. Some with periodic check-ins. Some completely silent or dark. Some climbing a certain path. <laughs> Just waiting to be tapped once they're useful enough. <laughs> Look, they're waiting to be activated. A sleeper agent, you understand? Most are amnesic. Mostly unwitting. All pawns in a generational covert war against humanity. Brainwashed children developed and molded into, sometimes not even yet adult, assets routed to various places and positions in life to maintain this worldwide network. The web. This is the underlying weapon wielded by the powers that be. This is the dirty secret that has created and links so many of the issues humanity faces. 
Now do you understand why government officials would be involved? You held these rumors of pedophilia and just can't believe that everybody would be involved in that. Surely, surely that's impossible. For ultimate trust and underlying access, when you're building an intelligent asset from the ground up as a handler, you gotta bond with a child young, just as you would bond with a canine young as a handler. Anything that is being raised, groomed, trained, and conditioned. So when the time comes later, it is a familiar face with a bond that can be trusted, and you can tap the resource directly. And as things get dirty with the <laughs> crossing and double crossing and triple crossing and intertwining in the world of intelligence and covert operations, you need to have direct access and authorization. Does this make sense now? If you can't believe how many pedophiles there are, understand this is a means to an end for a covert network. And their underlying power is behavioral modification, or what is effectively known as mind control. Yes, and the basis for this can only be carried out on children that are abused and de developed dissociation. There is decades and decades and more of research. And endless amounts of finances poured into this. And many secret societies, and even things such as narco cartels and street gangs, employ at least aspects of this behavior modification. But the truly top upper echelon secret society and military intelligence soldiers employ what is known as an occult pathworking, a series of trials and tribulations to truly build one's character and condition them simultaneously. We will get into it. Anything we fucking need to, as we need to, to get the point across, to rally support, to bring people together, and to handle this. And I will show you what I'm doing, and I'll show you what we all must do, and we'll get this fucking done. Because I'm sick of this bullshit out here. I'm sick of this bullshit. <laughs> and look, I spent a lot of time and fucking money on this bullshit to make a podcast to try to get through to people. It's taken a lot of time, and I don't have time to spare. I'm out here helping people, assisting people. I'm out here saving people, organizing safety, and taking steps to ensure that this cycle is not continued. And you will get to know me. I would just prefer it sooner than later so I can rally your support, and we can all solve these problems quickly. I'll show evidence that the same corrupt conglomerate that was behind the CIA, NSC, the National Security Council, Oliver North, Ollie North, and Barry Seal and company. <laughs> yeah, the cocaine importing, which they made movies about. The cocaine contra scandal in the early 80s that started the crack epidemic. Yeah, that same group, it's still operating today. That was merely a tentacle, a tip, a speck on the tip of an iceberg. And the same ones that carried that out orchestrated what is now the child trafficking epidemic. Although that has been layered off a bit more for plausible deniability, we will clarify everything. It's the same corrupt conglomerate behind codename Pegasus that blew in the 90s which branched further from just drug and weapon trafficking to include worldwide human trafficking, blackmail, extortion, and assassinations, including on U.S. soil. Oh, you haven't heard of Pegasus. Well. I'll tell you what, I made a fancy fucking setup. Why does this shit?
So why does this shit reset while I'm recording? I don't fucking know. Do you know how long this shit took to, to set up? Ah! Pegasus. Yeah. In the 90s, the former CID cover-up. <laughs> Turn whistleblower. You know what the fuck was going on? And this had to do with the Oliver North, Iron Cancer, Contra, and all this. Yeah. Hey. One of Gary Webb's resources. You remember what happened to Gary Webb? Oh, oh, what's that? People were named? What the fuck happened with this? Ninety-seven. Oh, what's that? Oh, Gore and Gore Clinton. Clinton wasn't running men in Arkansas. He wasn't providing protection at the airport, was he? No, hell no. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Huh? This guy didn't didn't provide a variety of documents covering his military and CIA. This guy wasn't legit, was he? Hell, fucking no. Cause you know what happened. So look, yeah, Bush, Clinton, <laughs> people before. I will people tell you, after. Director Deutsch, as a former Los Angeles police narcotics detective, that the agency has dealt drugs throughout this country for a long time. <laughs> Surely not. The room exploded. What I saw at that time was that there was a crying lack of knowledge in the body politic about how much evidence there really was about the criminal activities of the Central Intelligence Agency, specifically dealing drugs. Is this real? Director Deutsch, I will refer you to three specific agency operations known as Amadeus, Pegasus, and Watchtower. Oh, I have shit. Watchtower documents Scott. heavily redacted by the agency. I was personally exposed to CIA fuck? operations and recruited by CIA personnel who attempted to recruit me in the late 70s to become involved in protecting agency drug operations in this country. We don't have time I have to hear about this that. Out for 18 years and I have the Pegasus. Oh, we'll get to more, don't worry. Uh oh. The same architects behind Pegasus, which was worldwide human trafficking, drug trafficking, weapon trafficking, blackmail extortion, including politicians, almost primarily in many cases, and assassinations, including on U.S. soil, including on U.S. soil. The architects behind Pegasus are credited with forming what was then called Task Force 160. Now the 160th SOAR, the premier top-tier operator aviation service, which further allowed them to mass corrupt activity under the guise of national security, training drills, counterterrorism, anything feasibly related with legitimate cover. <sighs> Unfortunately, the same group is also in control of the recently publicized UAP, UFO, and advanced technology programs. This technology must be made known and put to use for the good of humanity and their access to utilized technology must immediately be revoked and restricted. Because these fucking assholes are idiot, coward bitches. And all they have is some momentum and infrastructure established. But for no longer. Back in 2007 to 2009, I was operations manager stationed at a private airstrip and training grounds that was set up in Pegasus in the early 80s. I was reporting directly to the NSC, the National Security Council, and I would only have contact with a handful of authorized associates unless it was a meet that was completely sterile protocol. And if you don't understand what that is, that is extreme measures to take to make sure I cannot be followed, am not followed before, after, and so on and so forth. I was on call 24-7 to be activated for response and recovery related to the aforementioned advanced programs. And we will get into this. I'm trying to keep this moving for now, and we will get into individual specifics as needed. 
As for why and how I was read in on these projects, I'm really not fond of having to go into any level of personal detail. I'm not here for my fucking health. I don't want to be speaking out. And really, what's most important is that we get to the contemporary and relevant issues. How we can save children, organize safety. Oh. <sighs> and revoke this corrupt conglomerate's control. But I understand you need some background info. And I am asking for your ear. <laughs> so, I will attempt to give the relevant info briefly in this introduction, and more so in the future to clarify as needed. Coming from a situation as a child where I had suffered abuse at the hands of some very sick people, I grew into a young man and understood that sometimes you have to take the gloves off to get dirty because there are some sick fucks out there. And we have to stop them by any means necessary to truly handle business in the most effective way. Sometimes you have to be, sometimes you have to act as a necessary evil for the greater good. This led to me eventually being involved with select anti-trafficking programs, which is what I actively sought. Coming from a background where I had been molested as a boy. Obviously, my natural reaction was to want to kill fucking child molesters, these stupid fucking pedophile bitches. Who can blame me, right? It's a pretty natural reaction, to be fair. Now, <laughs> and forgive me, look, y'all, I'm sorry, look, uh, and you should know that I have a good heart, and you will see what I have done. But yes, I'm a little rough around the edges, but I am a force that you all need, and you need to hear from. So here I am. A great expense to myself. Oh, thank you. <sighs> After being entered in these select anti-trafficking programs, again, which is what I actively sought, this eventually led to me being inserted into counterterrorism operations where the same attitude was required. A wartime warfighter mindset. As we were at war. And these were fucking monsters. You don't even want to know the disgusting shit they would do, but, you know, like, beheading people, leaving people dead, chopping off their dick, putting it in their mouth, all sorts of shit. I mean, it's it's bad, you know? I mean, in, in war, all this stuff that happens, you're sending messages to other men and trying to scare them. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, it gets rough. And, you know, don't take it from me. This is all the sort of thing that many people talk about. Let me get to what I need to talk about. At a certain level, in counter-drug and human trafficking, in counter-terrorism intelligence operations, at a certain level, and this is the deep black operations, where you're really having to operate in the gray area by any means necessary to get the job done. You may be required to commit horrible acts, undercover, and even to make certain films. For example, to be accepted into a meeting with a certain high-level, high-priority selected target, or her would-be associate. Look, these men are intelligent, and they're disciplined. They're no fools. It's an intelligent evil, which is to quote a phrase I've heard recently. And to reach them, you often have to go to great lengths, acting in an undercover capacity for the greater good. It's fucking rough. But if you have to harm one person on camera or commit an atrocious act to save hundreds or even thousands or who knows what ripple effects from these monsters. And everything I had experienced in life up to that point led me to believe, led to, to solidify, led to reinforce that belief. It's true. You have to understand, there's no black and white in warfare. <laughs> not many people are fighting thinking they're the bad guy. That's not how it goes. And extreme situations call for extreme measures, sometimes to save more innocent people later. Less innocent people get hurt along the way. It's unfortunate, but everything I had experienced in life up to this point proved this. It proved this. To me. But... <laughs> the lines began to blur. And taking a step back to bring the situation in focus, uh, uh, 
I started to make out the forest through the trees and began to question my directives. I began to question the procedures. I started to question every aspect of myself, my motivation, and my life. And I began to see how deep I truly was into living a lie, and I could not even look in the fucking mirror. Literally. It was at this point in something <laughs> I realized was wrong, but we will get into this. At this point, I was living a complete double life that included being involved with varying degrees of criminal activity for cover, ladies and gentlemen, with immunity and protection from prosecution and exemption for any loss of life damage to property, destruction, or otherwise in the course of my duties. It was granted. At this point, I was living a complete double life that included being involved with varying degrees of criminal activity. <laughs> Again, cooperatively, I had prepared videotapes and all for what I believe was requirements to gain entry into certain organizations and set up certain meets and so on and so forth. Or, in the alternative, in some cases also, we did create some videotapes uh, as a false cover to send people, family, so on and so forth, back when I had family. I know. So look. Every single aspect of my life was leveraged against me. Now, as a deep cover operative, and especially in black ops, we know we were not going to be claimed, all right? The cover story is fabricated. A few alternate stories already developed in a cooperative manner, as I had said, where I helped create some videotapes. Um, it's, it's protocol. It's literally protocol. And look, you got to understand, coming from a place where you just want to have permission to fucking kill these monsters, it's, uh, you know, you're jumping at it, especially as a young man. Yes, thank you. Oh, I'm proving myself. Oh, you're not thinking about, oh, shit, what am I getting myself into? You've been trying so hard to get to this place. You have to say yes, no matter what the fuck. And you're following orders anyways. Look, you know, they eliminate your need to, you know, feel responsibility by giving you directives. They, you know, it's, it's look, there's many aspects to this. And it's, you know, been, it's psychologically laid out and so on and so forth. Like, you know, you have to understand. I've had to forgive myself on this, so, uh, you know, forgive me if I justify, but I am doing everything I can, and obviously, you know, it's, look, I'm here to fucking help, otherwise I wouldn't be here, would I, okay? I could have a much better life if I decided <laughs> not to do what I've done, and you will see. <sighs> so, yeah, I'm a lack operative undercover, black male against myself. <laughs> So, it's, it was an honor to serve my country. It was an honor to serve mankind. I came from a horrible place where I was abused, and I was ready to self-sacrifice if that's the price to pay in fighting the monsters. I didn't need to be acknowledged publicly. I didn't even need to be known. As long as I made a difference. As long as I was to be the change I wanted to see in the world. But it became increasingly clear, it became increasingly clear that this wasn't national security at fucking all. Fuck. Oh, it's bad. And I was in deep. <laughs> My balls. Their rigged with tripwires set to go off at even the thought of uttering the word no. <laughs> Uttered the word no. These chip wires, yes, wrapped around my fucking balls is what it felt like, would trigger the walls of leverage I had helped build around myself come crashing down upon me. And I was at an impasse. An ingenious play on their part. <laughs> These motherfuckers that set this up. They're, you know, they're not green. They've been doing this. They're using my drive for justice to manipulate me into accepting. Dirty work, creating blackmail against myself undercover, you know, going off the books, 
as they do with all operatives, it's an absolutely required prerequisite to being read in on these programs. Yeah, blackmail must, must be in place for any operative at this level. For these types of programs, and I'm not talking about the counterterrorism, counter drug, I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about these black budget fucking UAP advanced technology programs and other super unethical fucking human asset programs with sleepers activating and using sleepers as, you know, an operative needs, you know, throughout the, you know, for me operating without the domestic, you know, without the United States of America is predominantly where I operate. Tid. So the black man has to be in place. It's the only way that they accept operatives. Because, uh, you know, it's... What the fuck else? You know what I'm saying? This is, this is serious fucking business. And this isn't your experience or your average special forces, mission units, any other operators. But at this level, with this shit, yeah, it's a prerequisite. And they're only recruiting certain people into this. That's just the way it goes. And, you know, you get into what's going on and it fucking makes sense. You know, that's really the only way forward for them. So look. I'm saying that, but I'm also not accepting it <laughs> because, you know, it's not going to be like that forever. I'm obviously here speaking out against it. So I'm just telling you kind of how it tends to be with the status quo is. Obviously, I'm not fucking going for it, am I? The blackmail train sailed a long time ago. I could give a shit. I'm hiding from inconvenience. They're not hiding from them. And perhaps a pawn that got in the way. I don't want that. I don't want a nuisance. And I don't want to engage anybody but the head of the snake. Because that's what I'm here for. And I have other people in the background as well. Oh, well, we'll get there. So it wasn't just blackmail. It wasn't just blackmail. No, there was something else in place. That's right. By myself. If I opened my eyes and started realistically analyzing my situation, a series of events led me to discover that my childhood, where I was abused, that I had virtually never thought about due to it being molested and sexual trauma. Who the fuck? What kind of man thinks back to that shit? I knew I was molested. How does fuck molest yourself and go forward and be successful? You know, like, what the fuck? What are you going to do? I don't want to think about that shit. But... Being kind of forced to reflect back on everything once I was in deep and said, oh shit, look at what we're doing and what was done. <laughs> and then being subsequently briefed, I came to discover that my childhood, the sexual abuse and the other trauma was not random, but it was partially enabled and largely directed. That's right. I was in a behavioral modification program myself. Ooh. And now I'm angry. <laughs> the organized grooming to condition me, to train me, akin to a dog from as young as possible, by any means necessary, to be as effective as possible, to ensure the corruption and ultimately control of my mind. You see the camera shit? I'm a pro already. This is fucked up shit! <laughs> I mean, what the fuck do you do? Look, man, I take the silver lining and say, well, now I'm here. And doing what's necessary to stop this bullshit. Because what the fuck else? As I digress. At the moment of this profound realization, <laughs> With this upheaval and flooding of repressed memories that came back to me. As soon as I fucking dawned on me. What the fuck. It was like I left the oven on when I left home. I said, oh shit. And it, boom. Just fucking there. Some shit I didn't want to think about. Like an embarrassing moment on a first date. That you shudder at when you think. Time's a fucking million. Where you're tortured and worse. And where you're in a horrible situation you can't do anything about. So you just fucking bury it and stomp it down to not think about it. Yeah, it all came up at once. The repressed memories, the trauma, the trials and the tribulations, the life lessons I learned, the lost loved ones, 
the coerced oaths and contracts. I was transformed as a person immediately. As soon as I remembered all this bullshit, it was like a cathartic release. And I immediately, one, became a lot less violent, let's say. But it's so much more profound than that. You have no idea. I was transformed as a person. And since then, I've been fighting against the conglomerate with everything I have. While organizing safety and providing support for those I can along the way. And this is again why I decided to speak out. Because unfortunately I don't see as many people doing these sort of things. And although I am quite proud of my success to this point after a quite bumpy start, I do have things in place and now I am willing to take the risk to speak out again to accelerate the rate of correcting course. Let me clarify. Back to this brief, some of which I have prepared. <laughs> Let me be clear. Behavior modification techniques that we will go into thoroughly, demystifying and explaining every aspect of as needed, have long been the underlying mechanism of containment, control, and continuance of these UAP, UFO, Advanced Technology and Spectral Access Programs. At a certain level, it is mandatory that the personnel and their families are under direct control. And one could argue this is for OPSEC, for Operational Integrity, National Security. But due to the deep-rooted corruption and abuse of power, the crimes against humanity, any claims as such, or for the greater good, are completely illegitimate. I've been involved with various persons and parties and carried out related handling of various activities throughout my activations and utilization as a covert operative. From lower level street gangs and narco cartels, circles of influential athletes, entertainers and celebrities, brotherhoods of military intelligence forces, units and officials, to committees of upper echelon career politicians, renowned scholars, and major industry executives. As one of the most capable operators, and I am one of the most capable operators. And many in the field will have heard of me. I was able to provide consultation strategy and service with prompt execution. The ability to repeatedly and reliably handle the most sensitive and delicate situations with the utmost discretion is invaluable and has led to extensive networking insight and intake of information, among other things. <laughs> In essence, I'm reporting to you directly from the Achilles. I will expose these cowards' weakness, arm you with the information and perspectives needed, and provide a way forward to set things straight. Generational bloodlines of this corrupt conglomerate have been operating since before and funding both sides of World War II. Hidden behind the scenes, acting as puppet masters, orchestrating the subsequent movement of their pawns in Operation Paperclip. Which was a secret United States. which was a secret United States intelligence program in which more than 1,600 German scientists, engineers, and technicians were taken from the former Nazi Germany to the U.S. for government employment after the end of World War II in Europe between 1945 and 59, conducted by blah, 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 blah. Yes, we took all the top leading scientists, etc., in after World War II for Nazi Germany. And so much more, because a corrupt conglomerate is really cherry-picking and running what they want behind the scenes. Because this group funded both sides of World War II again. Listen. They funded both sides of World War II. Behind the scenes, as, acting as puppet masters. Orchestrated Operation Paperclip. And then continued... Continuing the horrible 
the horrid vital threshold and behavioral modification research that was done at Auschwitz and the infamous MK Ultra on U.S. citizens, as well as other projects that weren't classified, that weren't declassified. And Project MK Ultra was an illegal human experimentation program designed and undertaken by the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA, and intended to develop procedures and identify drugs that could be used during interrogations to weaken people and force confessions through brainwashing and psychological torture. It goes on discussing electric shock, hypnosis, sensory deprivation, isolation, verbal and sexual abuse, other forms of torture, artichoke, split personality programs through there, making Manchurian candidates, and so much more. MK Ultra was mostly whitewashed, even though a lot was declassified, and if you read the documents, you get more of the real story. And if you read certain novels, such as The Manchurian Candidate or Operation Bluebird, the CIA doctor, so on and so forth, it will give more of a common story common sense narrative from the declassified documents. But many that watch Netflix may only know it as Olsen taking some LSD and jumping or being pushed from a building. No, it was so much more, so much more profound for decades this research was being done. This research was being done for decades. Four of the MK Ultra subprojects involved research on children. They have 11-year-old boys underwent a partial change of identity upon, upon a remote stimulation of his brain electrode. Do you understand what that means? What ensued from that point is ultimately responsible for the majority of and overall created the common culture of political and government corruption. Spinning the web of entanglement to include drug, weapon, and human trafficking, and leaving a trail of collateral damage and destruction in its wake that spans all walks of life. From the executive, judicial, and legislative branches of the United States government, effectively uniting the separation of power within their wretched clasp, to the various mechanisms of geopolitics, worldwide authorities, committees, organizations, and the military-industrial intelligence complex. <laughs> they carry influence in every industry. Telecommunications, aerospace, transportation, logistics, agriculture, health care. Then you know what that implies. They control education. They control finance. Virtually every facet of life has been affected and must be clarified. Clarification of the dirty underbelly by way of manual cleansing. Clarifying the confusion caused by this corrupt caucus through clear communication affecting course correction. I speak out once again in direct defiance of the conglomerate. And despite the consequences those would love to impose on me yet again. Not only despite, but because of. Because of enduring years of false imprisonment. Yes. Including over a year maximum security solitary confinement in a 7 by 9 cell for over 23 hours a day. Many days, the full 24 hours. Many weeks without even as much as a book or a pencil. Because that could not break me. Because it felt like a vacation compared to what I was used to. <laughs> and that's the truth. Is the ironic thing. And ironically, that solitary confinement allowed me to face things more directly than ever. Because surviving multiple attempts on my life because now I know that something, somehow, is protecting me as I walk this path of righteous indignation. Because of losing everything in my life time and time again, through imprisonment, through sabotage, because it allowed me to shed my attachments and learn what is truly important. Because now I consciously choose self-sacrifice of lifestyle and future, so I am free to fight this war for the people. Because of witnessing so much loss of life. Because of all the collateral damage of the innocent. Because of those close to me that suffered. 
Because now I have nothing left to lose. <laughs> I speak to save the children. <laughs> you motherfuckers. <laughs> for the good of the people. For those genuinely concerned. For those hoping to hear from. And those calling uninvolved operatives to seek out. As I join in this call myself yet again. For those curious and confused. For the many courageous. And in direct response to the many controlled podcasters, personalities, and packs with large followings and various social media and miscellaneous platforms. Many unwitting to various degrees. And of course, the rapidly fading legacy media. But riddance. And in direct response to the corrupted organizations. From charlatans embezzling and ill-equipped outfits negligently squandering and misusing resources. Well, I'm out here <laughs> fucking giving everything. <laughs> and making a difference. To the strategically developed controlled opposition. We're directly funneling resources from generally concerned supporters and directly funneling abused and trafficked children to the hands of this corrupted conglomerate. <laughs> Running the most insidious and organized trafficking rings at all. These motherfuckers. I think it's funny. I seem to be exhibiting some emotion. But I don't give a fuck. I think everybody will be pleased when you see what I've been doing and what I have going on. You don't have to be scared of these people. <sighs> Let me be clear. Again. There is a terroristic conglomerate responsible for many conspiracies and false flag operations over the years. Not just the aforementioned. They are truly men against mankind committing crimes against humanity. These crimes are carried out and this corrupt conglomerate agenda is advanced under the false pretenses of national security and counterterrorism, spreading and upholding democracy and philanthropic or otherwise responsible activities for, for mankind and the planet. In reality, they are nothing more than vile parasites that have latched onto humanity Manipulating their desires and cares. And after generations have infested and control every aspect of modern day civilization through attachment and manipulation, through subterfuge. Virtually every. Look, this is a multi generational war, a multifaceted assault on humanity that has been carried out over a span. And as such, the wounds are deeply seated from familial to cultural. And it may take generations to truly heal humanity and restore balance. But we must immediately move to organize safety and secure the sanctity of our children and their development, their education. The children are sacred and the children are our future. This episode will briefly explore the history and explain the existence of this insidious brainwashing on children. I'm going to show the 95 presidential committee hearing when this information last really impacted the public. Then go over what happened, what didn't, and how this pattern is reflected over time in cycles. Cycles that must be halted. Cycles that must be broken. Oh, thank you. I'll then brief you on my history, how I tie into this, and take you along the timeline of when I went rogue, acting against the families and the network, after a series of events led to me discovering that I had been groomed and brainwashed, and what I thought was a random series of events in childhood was passively enabled and directly enacted a program to mold me and develop me into something. Something different, and something that people need to know exists. Because there are others like me in this world. Similar. That are not turned to the light. 
And that is truly a concerning concept. The subject matter may be dark, but I come as a beacon to present hope and give faith. I am but one, however there are many behind me. As you see, as you will see, I rallied support over the years in the background, and I have been leading the charge against evil. On the front lines of this covert war for over a decade, going for the head to break the cycle. Now after a decade, I've done the work I needed to do in the background, and things are in place. Things are in motion that will succeed with or without me. I don't give a fuck. It's time to me speak out again, motherfucker. Yeah, so here I come. At this point, look, do what you will to me, motherfucker. Because we all know how that goes, and you'll give me an excuse. I've already put in the work. Anything more is just extra. So now, I'll begin this outreach to the public and set the record straight when I see all these charlatans and confused and controlled parties and corrupted organizations. I'm here to garner support of the people. I'm here to provide support and assistance for victims and survivors and to call out to the remaining of my brothers in arms the time is now, my friends. Join me. <laughs>